on this day of February 11th, 2022. That's right. I looked at my phone. I got the date. We're professionals. A day before, on Thursday, February 10th, the patch 9.2 for World of Warcraft was announced to be releasing on February 22nd. And there's a Nintendo Direct. If you want to know what they said wasn't possible, Matt, but I proved them wrong because I controlled Nintendo to make them release Switch Sports. Okay. I have pondered my orb. And while pondering my orb, I commanded those that be to give me Switch Sports with a sweet leg strap in the physical edition so that I may kick a soccer ball. This will be exciting because I've literally looked at nothing for a Nintendo Direct. Welp, I am once again the Nintendo person of the podcast. It's a hard role to play. Hey, this is the Gamers 2 Podcast. Your weekly, weekly, ooh, wow. Your weekly roundup of news and commentary related to the video game industry and anything else that might pique our interest. Like uh, the Super Bowl in two days. Super Bowl in two days. Um, baseball lockout meeting tomorrow. Baseball might be happening. Formula One cars are getting shown off. Yeah, pretty colors. Yeah. Those. <laughs> when I see a Reddit comment that was like, uh, you know, whenever you feel like you're useless, just remember that Red Bull pays a livery designer. Because they have the same. The cars look the same every year. I was going to say, yeah. I was, that, yeah. I mean, that's going to be a pretty good job, though. Oh, yeah. You fucking probably get paid bank and you do nothing. Yeah. You're just like, oh. Huh. Man, I wonder what I'm going to do this year. Copy. Copy. Paste. Kind of fuck with the scaling a little Stretch bit. Stretch a little bit here. Scaling here. There we go. <laughs> Nailed it. Hope the, hope the cars never actually change. Because if the car is like truly, really changed visually, that guy's going to have like a couple hours of work he has to do. Yeah. He, she. They probably, which probably is even more messed Ooh, up. That's true. It might not be one person. It might be a team of livery designers. Can you imagine if they had a team of livery designers at Red Bull? Honestly, the, the, one, the one at Haas has killed it. They saved themselves and their painters a shit ton of time. Hey, here's three colors and nothing else. See yeah, they just taped the Russian flag to every side of the car. <laughs> I was going to say France, <laughs> because that's where they'll finish, waving their own car. Uh, oh, we give up. Oh, it's, not, Sacre bleu. it's an American team, in quotations. No stars, though. They say there's an American team, but there's no stars on any of that car. Yeah, because and it's all they, Russian flags. Exactly. They didn't write freedom once on it. Exactly. There's no... There's no gun stickers. Eagles. No eagles. Yeah, no eagles. You could The scoop could be a bald eagle. That giant white above where it says Haas right on the nose mm-hmm. before you get to the windscreen should just be the eagle holding the assault rifles crossed. Nailed it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> enough, enough Americanisms. Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? Ooh, interesting choice. I don't know. It is one of the years for me where it's been the closest. So theoretically good game. Yeah, it's currently like a four to four and a half point spread. Rams are favored. Yeah, I would assume. Uh, But Bengals have had a hell of a run. Mm -hmm. And everyone loves an underdog. Joe Cool. I don't know who that is. Joe Burrow. Okay. He's just chill, man. He's just there. He's like, ah, it's another week. I'm here to do my thing. Yeah. I'm going to throw the ball. I'm going to run the ball. I'm going to do whatever I need to do. Win that game. Yeah. But you never know. Super Bowl, it's their first time there. But kind of both teams a little bit. I mean, Rams were there a couple years ago, but new quarterback and everything else. So it'll be interesting. I'm I'm expecting a good game. I've got money on the game. Oh, my God. Who doesn't? New York State's like, oh, gambling. <laughs> but here's the thing. Yeah. I don't have that much money on the game. I have less money on an, a, on the game than a new video game costs. You know how much money I have on this game? You know how much money I have in sports gambling? I give him the perfect segue. The perfect I'm segue. I'm just saying. All right? I got a hill. I'm going to die on it. 
I got what little... fucking new games came out? <laughs> <laughs> fucking segways. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I hate those vehicles. Uh, they got even, some cool shit now. Does even anybody even ride those anymore? No, but Segway makes other things. And um, did they start making the Una the Una wheel? I haven't seen that. They have like a they have like a dirt what? bike, electric dirt bike type thing. Oh. You know, what I mean, a, you know what I mean by the unawheel thing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. They have, um, they have like an electric scooter that's pretty neat, like the, like not like a, like a moped, not like a moped, but like a, um, like a kick scooter. Yeah, kind of, but it's electric. Boogie woogie. It's, it's for like around town. It's like forty mile range. Oh, kind of like those ones that get dropped everywhere. Yes. Yes. I can't remember what the name of those a ones. Random are. Segway, Segway. Number one. On uh, things you could buy instead of a Segway. Apex Legends Defiance for the PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. Number two, Model Builder for the PC. I'm in. Matt's in. Don't know what kind of models, though. Let's be fair. It could be uh, human models. Hopefully, it's okay. Hopefully, it's all of the models. All right. You went for a much more safe approach than I did. Number three, Ali Ali World. For the PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. Maybe it's a skin suit builder. Number four. (laughs) (laughs) Number four. Rumbleverse for the PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. It puts the lotion on the skin. Number five. (laughs) Sifu for the PC and PlayStation. Is that full price? Is that $60? That is $40. $50? $40. 50 or 40. Okay. I think. Okay. So, yeah, that exists. Currently on a hold because Horizon. Yeah. That's I got feel my that. money. Horizon that. and then Horizon's what, Friday, right? Next week? I think so. So, Tuesday is the Star Wars expansion. So. Mm. I'm going to kind of watch that a little bit and see if I throw money at that before then because I'm not – that's the issue. Star Wars on the 15th, Horizon uh, three days later or whatever, mm-hmm. and then <laughs> and then World of Warcraft patch. So it would be a bad time for me to start Star Wars with Star – with WoW right there. Yeah. Star Wars, I think, will probably end up being like a late summer thing. Yeah, for or, me, or yeah, yeah, summer, yeah. yeah it'll be my, my. Filler. Okay, I've kind of finished this, waiting for the ten o expansion announcement. Give yeah, me something to do. Uh, number six, Unbound Worlds Apart for the PlayStation. Number seven, About an Elf for the Switch. Number eight, Crossfire X for the Xbox. Fitting a lot of X's in there. Number nine, Edge of Eternity for the PlayStation and Xbox. Number 10, Aglia Rebirth for the Switch. Number 11, oh my god, number 11 through 14, just Kingdom Hearts. They're on the Switch, deal with it. Number 15. <laughs> Fuck. There's so many of them. So stupid. Uh, number two, f- One of them's 2.8. Yeah, yeah, you got 1.5, 2.5, 2.8, 3 plus, and Integrum. Whatever all that means. For somebody that cares. Number 15, Out There, Oceans of Time for the PC. Number 16, Lost Ark, officially out for the PC. And number 17, Unbound, Worlds Apart, that I read already. So it's out for the Xbox as well. (laughs) Uh, Different release dates? Different release dates. Yeah. Weird. I was looking at it, I was like, I've read this before. Shit. That's a weird one. Lost Ark, though. Hey, it's out. Which, what's Lost Ark? That is the Korean MMO making its North American and, I believe, Europe debut. Hmm. It's been around for roughly four years. You know, Not familiar with that one. It's the isometric, like, 2D kind of Diablo-looking MMO. Not ringing a bell. All right, then. It, you say not ringing a bell. I beta tested it. I sent you the picture of it, and you said, oh, is that Lost Ark? I don't know, bro. All right, bad brain. <laughs> bro, I got that bad brain. Bad brain. Uh, what are you feeling? 
Odds, evens. Odds has got the shitty. I'm wrong feeling one. I'm going to find a picture of Lost Ark here in a second. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, and I'm feeling. What did I just? I just did new releases, so odds come next. I'm going to take evens. Okay. You, you think bad brain? Whew, that honestly, that thought segment. <laughs> Her. Uh, do you want me to wait for you to find Lost Ark? Nope. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to show you. All right. Right now. If this. No. <laughs> Everything's going insane. <laughs> All right, let's kick things off with a proper response to NFTs. Games platform itch.io has expressed its loathing of NFTs in a series of tweets addressing its stance. The statement says, quote, NFTs are a scam. If you think they are legitimately useful for anything other than the exploitation of creators, financial scams, and the destruction of the planet, then we ask that you please reevaluate your life choices. Also, fuck any company that says they support creators and also endorses NFTs in any way. They only care about their own profit and the opportunity for wealth above anything anyone else. Especially given the now easily available discourse concerning the problems of NFTs. How can you be so dense? End quote. So you see that? Sort of, yeah. I don't... All right, you look it up then. Screw you. Um, <laughs> I'm like struggling to read. I'm like, I could just look it up on my phone. And yeah, no. yeah. Itch out here dropping dropping NFT bombs. Yeah, I respect that. Respect it. Or I guess bombing the NFT space. Speaking of NFTs. Truth bombs. Speaking of NFT bomb dropping and... I don't know how I tie this back in other than the NFT angle. Uh, did you see the tops? Is going to drop a 1952 Mickey Mantle one of one NFT on OpenSea. That's kind of uh, so. What are they expecting for that? Like they're they're. I can't remember what the money is going for, but it gets you the the NFT with the image, obviously, and then some other stuff in it too. Like you get to talk to Mickey Mantle's sons or something, and I was like, what kind of what? Why is that a thing? It's so, going to, uh, uh, oh my God, it's just so disgusting. Yeah, I agree. It's not, it's, you know, surpri- not surprising, I guess, that they're going to try to get involved. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean they do have a Tops NFT uh, site, mm. but now they're doing this independent of that. Which that's the kind of weird part. Yeah. But I guess it makes sense if you want to. Again, we don't agree. But if you want to get ever the most eyes on it, I feel like OpenSea is like one of the most popular marketplaces for that. So yeah, it makes sense. I'm kind of hoping with the backlash that the whole NFT thing just kind of dies away. We'll see. Yeah, I don't think it will, but I can hope. Part of the issue is. Uh, the old popular athlete in Hollywood getting involved. Mm. So now everybody wants to be as cute and cozy because they all own apes like Jimmy Fallon owns apes. And it's like, oh, my God. I hope you all realize you're nothing like them. Anyway. <sighs> Depressing. Maybe going back to my Thanos theory, can we just snap anybody that has an NFT? Do I remove? Dope. Do we still remove half the planet at that point? That would be pretty dope. If if it's actually that would be frightening because then we'd know and it'd be like, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> you betrayed me. <laughs> Number two, Sony Interactive Europe is relocating its Liverpool office after twenty seven years. That's a long time. They've been a part of Liverpool's Waver Tree Technology Park since the debut of the original PlayStation in Europe. The new 65,000-square-foot campus sees the company move from the suburbs into the middle of the city. The new facility boasts collaboration and entertainment spaces, a cafe, a staff gym, and a rooftop terrace. It'll open in the spring. 
I like that's just his own sentence. I don't know why. That's just <laughs> really funny that it's a, it'll open in the spring. Yeah. Uh, Sony says that the new location is designed to attract and retain talent and better connect with tech companies, business partners, and academic communities. Sony all about retaining that talent. Uh, especially now. <laughs> hey, we're going to pay specifically $1.2 billion to retain you. They're please like, don't leave us. <laughs> <laughs> please. Please don't leave us. I'm just curious when it says, you know, new facility boasts collaboration and entertainment spaces. Collaboration. <laughs> That's a reference that nobody gets. <laughs> I know. Uh, but it's like, what, is it, what does that mean? Entertainment, obviously, that one. Yeah, busy. yeah. But what is a collaboration space? conference rooms <laughs> that's i mean that's like with the, the that's digital the, whiteboard things that's like the dumb modern version of it yeah. it's like, oh it's collaboration everybody like, it's just a conference room dude it's it's got a projector but what i think is there are escape rooms <laughs> okay <laughs> because that takes a lot of collaboration it's like a like a <laughs> like like a way of um, every day breaking of, the ice with uh, teams or something like that. Every so day you know. at four o'clock f- for the first two weeks of your new hire, you have to get out of the escape room in order to go home that night. <laughs> Is it like, are we talking the they dark the, escape rooms? Like the, like, uh, what are those horror movies called? No, no, not like Saw. Not like Saw where there's like acid. No, no, no. Just stuff. like typical, like you go to the mall and they it's get an escape. Dive. You know the worst one that really skeeved me out? Which one? Was when there was like a, the key to the like leave the locked room was in the bottom of a pit of needles. Oh, like yeah, yeah, syringes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There was that one because also in that same movie, there was the one in the old, which again, everybody in those movies is usually stupid and there's a simple way around things. Yes. But one of the keys was in the uh, razor blade style, like once you uh, like arm trap, when you put your hand in, it like the opening ended up doing the old pinch against you yeah, yeah and so you could grab the key but in order to pull back out you, you would have had like, to like blood yourself yeah but if you had just stuck like a stick up there mm-hmm. prob- problem solved yeah yeah anyway <sighs> no just just a typical escape room and you put all the new hires in for the first two weeks mm-hmm. with rotating members of all like the spinach. Sen- seniority all the spinach <laughs> all the spinach with a little bit of collard greens so you don't know which is which you know yeah. what i mean no, nobody knows the spinach story. It's my favorite thing. Though. I know it's random. <laughs> it was. You know what my favorite thing about that was is we were not the only ones that agreed to that. I randomly made up a. I I didn't make up the word spinach, obviously, but I just chose spinach, and then ten people were yeah, like, "Yeah, kind of spinach." Thing. Yeah, it's up spinach, and you're like, <laughs> I'd hear it down away, and I'd be like, "Oh my god, that guy's talking to a new person." <laughs> uh, it was so good, but the uh, yeah. So you put all the spinach in. And then you just kind of every day you give them a different people from management, so they all learn how to work together. Mm. So like, all right, are we telling l- them that they're management? Yeah, or are we or are only they... on the final day because okay. the final day is when they get to get paired with the final boss, the lead of HR. Oh no! Exactly. So they're all comfortable with each other, and then exactly. you throw it. and then you throw in the lead of HR, and they're just like, "Man, can you believe this shit?" And she's like, "I'm taking notes." Uh, that's some like Activision Blizzard shit right there. Can you imagine me <laughs> trapped in a room with Brianna? <laughs> I don't know if she in would the... end up dead or if you'd end up eaten. 50 50. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 50, I mean, that's it's, like, it's a coin that's a good, that's a better matchup so, than the Super Bowl. Not that you know, not that we love to just do tangents, but now that we're talking about that, the. <laughs> I did lock, if you don't remember, I did lock myself in her office at one point because her and I had to have it out with each other. Oh, okay. That was the, that was right towards the end when I said like, you don't like me and I don't like you. <laughs> Let's just agree that we can give each other shit and not take it personally and move on. And so it worked perfectly at that point on because then it, it like at evening huddles when she was closing, she'd give me shit and I would just give it back, and you could watch the rest of the team go like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> this is uncomfortable. <laughs> but it was like, we both understood at that point. Yeah, sure. We're not. We're good. You know, everything's fine. But they wanted me to do that with Matt. Oh, yeah. That's... And, like, all, all the other leads were like, you need to go talk to him. And I'm like, only with all of you in the room, because I will fight him. 
Anyway, different story. Yeah. The that brings us all back to this story. Yesterday, hmm. I ran into coffee. It was the first time. So I ran into him a few times, like saw him. This is the first time he did the double take of like, wait, I know who that is. Yeah. And then he told me, oh, I saw Brianna in here not that long ago. Like she was in here earlier today. Yeah. And I was like, well, I better leave or else I'm going to have a fight. <laughs> and he just kind of laughed. and was like, yeah, probably. Because <laughs> <laughs> he never knew. He never knew the end of it that we ended up okay. Yeah. But it was just funny. Ugh. He's like, you know, I saw Brianna, and I was like, oh, so I'm going to have to get in a fight, aren't I? <laughs> oh, thanks for the warning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got to get out of here, then. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Speaking of people that like to fight, um, as we get closer to the Steam Deck's launch, the hype train is getting more coal dumped into it. Epic's Fortnite and CEO Tim Sweeney were inadvertently caught in the wake when asked about Fortnite Linux support. Fun fact. Yes. Here's the new metrics. Continue. Well, what was... Where? When? Or no. It might have been Mustard. Isn't there a guy at Epic named Mustard? I don't know. Donald Mustard? They might... I don't know. I No, not Tim Sweeney. I think it's Donald Mustard. I gotta look okay. it up now. Uh, they're in the... In the very beginning, in the game dev studio, when oh, all hell starts breaking okay. loose, they're in there. Okay. All right, so he was asked about uh, Linux support when it comes to Fortnite. His response was, Fortnite, no. But there's a big <laughs> effort underway <laughs> to back <laughs> <He> just said, <laughs> No. No. <laughs> oh, God, I choked. Fortnite, no. But there's a big effort underway to maximize easy anti-cheat compatibility with the Steam Deck. Uh, he went on to say, quote, we don't have confidence that we'd be able to combat cheating at scale under a wide array of kernel configurations, including custom ones, end quote. Uh, the too long didn't read version is that Fortnite's implementation of easy anti-cheat would either require its Linux driver to be open source, which Epic wouldn't do, or it would require Epic to use a kernel module, which wouldn't be too secure from prying eyes and would require specific support for every Linux update. The Steam Deck gets lumped into this because Valve is not planning on locking down the Steam OS. Also, Valve and Epic are direct competitors, so they won't work it out behind the scenes. Sounds about right. It's not surprising. Yeah. So. Uh, it was Donald Mustard. Donald Mustard. That doesn't sound like a real person. Yeah, it is. You've seen him. I've seen that man before. Yes, you have. <laughs> uh he you uh, have an unfortunate name, sir. He he was 100% in this because I saw the shot and I went, that's Donald. How weird. <laughs> <laughs> but it also makes sense because there was a lot of them making a lot of those weird references to things. Yeah. How are you feeling on the Steam Deck so far? I see it when it comes out. I mean, I'm not. I didn't order one. No. I don't plan on getting one at any point. But it. So I suppose it looks a little bit bigger, like hardier than the Switch. It is. It's definitely bigger than the it's, Switch. It's a little bit bigger. Thick and boy. It's definitely thicker. So I feel like it would probably feel better. Are you familiar with the Gamers Nexus YouTube channel? Yes. They did a breakdown of it and were like uh pleasantly surprised at how well it's designed. Which I'm in some ways, I'm not surprised. Yeah, because Valve does, they do good jobs with exactly, hardware, exactly. which is weird because it never sells well. It also true. Yeah. But it's like when they put their all behind something, yeah. Half Life Alex, mm. you go, oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's when just they, not often that they do that. Yeah. It's like herding cats, you know, like they don't often, you can't often get them all to look at something and be like, oh, yeah, I'll work on that. But when you can. But you can. It's. Egypt happens. You know, they worship cats. Cats really ran Egypt. <laughs> you think humans can build three giant pyramids? Come on. So that's <laughs> just so we're clear. Giant Sphinx? You believe in this idea that it's not the cats, sea people. It's not that, it's not the sea people. I never said it was the sea people. It's the cat people. I to be fair. <laughs> I never even brought the sea people up. I'm so, just saying, everyone's always like, oh, the sea people. Yeah, Listen, but, but how sea people s- aren't the real movers and shakers in the ancient world. But okay? how, do, how would the sea people have worked in desert Egypt? So surprisingly, all right, we're going to get way <laughs> off on a tangent here. 
there is a whole thing with the sea people in Egypt. But that's neither here nor there, there because Egypt cat people cats built. Yeah, the but you know how cats and fish work. That's just it. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. That's what I'm saying. Cats. Yeah. But you're telling me <laughs> <laughs> because I am gonna do I I'm gonna drill down this. That's fine. You're telling me that the cats built the pyramids. Maybe not literally. I'm saying cats they, are the driving force behind did they the greatness did they of ancient the, Egypt. Did they commission and engineer the pyramids? I mean, they might have engineered the pyramids. They might have taught the humans how to did build they, the pyramids. Did they inadvertently do it? Or they they might have like, threatened to give the humans cat scratch fever if they didn't build the pyramids. Like the song? Yes. All right. I'm just saying. Cat, cat scratch fever. Cats. They do great things sometimes. I mean, the Sphinx, I understand. That's a clear one. But how does Anubis show up? You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean... They wouldn't let that exist. Cats. Yeah, but they wouldn't let a dog run around. Yeah, it was, it, there's only one of them. There's not that many cats. There's a lot of cats in of, Egypt. There's a lot of cats in Egypt, but there's like... There's only one dog. There's not, though. Like, he was a god. One. How many cats were there as gods? All of them. There were birds. How does that work? Listen, how does Ra work as a f- cats are merciful? Sometimes they'll give you they'll they they'll kill, throw you a bone or two. They killed the sea people. Then they'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steam Deck. Um, what I've noticed, I which want, is surprising, I want, I want an animated storyline so bad of that of like just cats murdering sea people. <laughs> What's surprising is that the people I've talked to who are interested in possibly getting one are the a very unlikely crowd of people who are like gamers, but they're predominantly console gamers, and they don't have any sort of PC, you know, know how or interest. But they're like, "Oh, this is I, a accessible." Gateway. Yeah, yeah, it's the gateway drug. Gateway yes. PCs. It's got the cow box and everything. Aha, yeah. uh-huh. gateway joke. The I had a gateway. Yeah? It was pretty good, actually. All right. Um, no, I didn't have a gateway. I had e-machines. Ooh. Same thing, though. Kind of. I yeah. mean, basically. Yeah. I also had an e-machine. One bought the other one. Well, gateway got bought by Dell, and... and then they were bought by cats. Back to cats? Always back to cats. All right. Um, I'm assuming I know roughly the crowd. The it It's not surprising to me that they'd be interested. Mm-hmm. But it's not. It's also not surprising for the reason. But there's just a partial surprise for me where I'm like, "But why?" Because those people, some of them, own both consoles. So there's not much you'd be missing by getting it. So it's a yeah. It's I mean, a, some of it is um, a misunderstanding I, of what it is. I think there's that mixed with also. Shiny new toy. I want shiny new toy. Some of the the mo- more people, most of the people are PlayStation people, not Xbox people, which I feel like is a big that well that which again makes a big sense. contributing factor. But it's just funny always to me because it reaches a group when we come to these discussions. Whenever we do of, of our known acquaintances, that <laughs> that. A lot of times, sometimes, a lot of times, sometimes, a lot of times in some of their their normal thought processes or whatever is, ooh, shiny new thing, or ooh, so-and-so told me to like it because it's good. Yeah. And then I just like it now, and it's now part of my identity. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's not how you should work as a human, but I digress. Yeah. Well, like, oh, Steam man, Deck. I saw that. Like, I saw the gamers. Not that this is not you, but I'm going to use yeah. you as a direct reference. Like, oh, I saw the gamers next. did a really cool breakdown. And it, oh, man, it looks, it looks awesome. It looks really good. I'm like, do you even know what it does? Oh, yeah, man, it does all the. It's got this inside. I'm like, you literally are just regurgitating. Yeah. Videos. Yeah. Anyway, shall we go on to number four? Xbox's head of gaming, still best title in the game. Phil Spencer recently had an interview with Axios's Stephen Totillo. He's there now? 
Anyway, here's a couple interesting quotes. Can we really make these games? Can we allow them to reach more players than they've ever seen before? And I say that because I believe in the social impact of interactive entertainment. I want more people to be playing WoW in five years than are playing today. Don't we all? I want more people to be playing Call of Duty in five years. More people to be playing Candy Crush because we've made it more accessible to more people. There it is. It's a lot of people. That's a lot, a lot of people. He wants more WoW players. More. That one's not like hard, I think, to achieve in five years. Uh, more Candy Crush players, though. That's... Get that, you with that uh, Candy Crush Tetris effect or whatever. Ooh. Candy Crusher. Candy Crusher connected. <laughs> Just so you can see. <laughs> uh, you can abbreviate that wrong. People ask, when is the Game Pass price going to go up? Quote, they're buying all these studios. You know it's inevitable, end quote. Even though it's been, what, now four years? We haven't raised it. But it's like, you know it's coming. When they are number one, they're going to start doing all those exclusive deals that, like, you know, Xbox has that history. I love him, like, re-quoting the crowd. It's like, a, just arrogant. <laughs> and all I can do is make the decisions that are in front of us and try to be explicit about what our goals are. So at least it sounds like no matter what changes they're going to make, they'll know ahead of time and they'll be explained to why. Yeah. I've noticed a trend with Microsoft and we're, we're it's going to be more apparent in the... Oh, let me close my doc. It's going to be more apparent in the next news story I read. But Microsoft has been being extra... Uh, sp- What's the word I want to look for? Extra aggressive about being honest and like showing, like you know, this is what's going on. This is what our intentions they're, are. They're being what I like to think I am. Yeah, upfront, honest, <laughs> upfront, <laughs> not abrasive. Mm, no, <laughs> like I said, what I like to think. Uh, they're just like, hey, here's the facts. You guys say whatever you want, but here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Speaking of, I pity the fool. <laughs> Microsoft Vice Chairman and President Bradford Lee Smith. What a name. Oh, well, I'm so happy. We lost some great names, and now we get Bradford Lee Smith. Has authored a blog post to get out ahead of regulators looking into their recent acquisition. What acquisition could that be? Quote, We recognize that regulators may well have other important questions as they review our acquisition of Activision Blizzard. We're committed to addressing every potential question, and we want to address publicly at the outset. Uh, I messed that up. I was going to say onset, and then I was like, no, it's actually outset. Uh, Two such questions here. First, some commentators have asked whether we will continue to make popular content like Activision's Call of Duty available on competing platforms like Sony's PlayStation. The obvious concern is that Microsoft could make this title available exclusively on the Xbox console, undermining opportunities for Sony PlayStation users. To be clear, Microsoft will continue to make Call of Duty and other popular Activision Blizzard titles available on PlayStation through the term of any existing agreement with Activision. And we have committed to Sony that we will also make them available on PlayStation beyond the existing agreement and into the future so that Sony fans can continue to enjoy the games they love. We are also interested in taking similar steps to support Nintendo's successful platform. We believe this is the right thing for the industry, for gamers, and for our business. End quote. He goes on to say, quote, Our vision is to enable gamers to play games on any device anywhere, including by streaming from the cloud. App stores on the the most relevant and popular everyday devices like mobile phones, PCs, including Windows PCs, and in time, the cloud, are important to realizing this vision. But too much friction exists today between creators and gamers. App Store policies and practices on mobile devices restrict what and how creators can offer games and what and how gamers can play them. Looking at you, Apple. Exactly. Our large investment to acquire Activision Blizzard 
further strengthens our resolve to remove this friction on behalf of creators and gamers alike. We want to enable world-class content to reach every gamer more easily across every platform. We want to encourage more innovation and investment in content creation and fewer constraints on distribution. Put simply, the world needs open app markets, and this requires open app stores. The principles we're announcing today reflect our commitment to this goal, end quote. Uh, he then goes on to list these principles, um, which it's quite lengthy, not going to get into it, but that sums it up nicely. Uh, another important point is that Microsoft plans to keep the different app stores open to ease consolidation. So there's your Blizzard uh, battle.net. Yep. Answer for now. As I said. As he said, I, and thus it is so. Let's be fair, I do own cats. Or a cat. Hail, Cat King. <laughs> Hail, the King of Cats. <laughs> Praise be unto them and their fish. Yes, exactly. Um, fish sacrifices. Um, <laughs> down with the sea people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that just might be my new Discord status for like the next month and a half. Down with the sea people. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... People. It's a uh, it's a good, it, I mean it's a lot of talk, mm -hmm. but it's also the correct statement to make. Yeah, even though it is a very PR, it is. But statement. it is it is kind of like, uh, I mean it's definitely it's definitely PR. It's, it's worded, a, it's a good it's, mix of the two. It's like it's pretty in your face for PR, like straight up address regulators and be like, yeah, we get this might be a little dicey proposition, but we're going to have the games on all platforms because let's be honest, we like money. Hey, look at us. Who'd have thought, right? Yeah. I like money. You like money. You know, what we both don't like anti-competition. So here's what I'm proposing to do. I'm still going to compete because I'm going to go everywhere. Yeah. Here's what you should do, though. Uh, take a look at Apple and tear them down. Thanks. Appreciate you. Bye. <laughs> that's pretty that's a pretty good summary of this whole blog post because that's basically that i mean when you say oh it's a cl we shouldn't have closed marketplaces there's one glaring one that yeah. you're in a lawsuit with that is like hey how about you don't just don't <laughs> good times good times anything else before i go on um I don't think so. Okay. I I I I feel it's it's interesting cuz Microsoft has made like every move they've made has been good. And every you can't really move, fault them. Every move you make. Um <laughs> wait, wait to stay away from the copyright there. Yeah, right. Uh did that purposely. Oh, I know. Um and I have this like feeling like I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. So it's it's really bizarre because it's like on one hand I'm hopeful I'm like oh my god like there's so much potential they're doing all these good moves like what's gonna happen and then on the other hand I'm like it's never it's too good to be true like when's the other shoe gonna drop it it's making it hard to dislike them yes I mean I've already been there you know Xbox mm -hmm. Game Pass Game Pass yeah you know a great selection of games for a cheap cost I mean what more could you want pay fifteen get X Cloud oh my god it's such a great service. And you know, there's so it's it's hard to dislike them if you know what I mean. And yeah. uh <laughs> But it's just okay, cool. You I feel like you're like obligated to just love them now because now they have wow as they, well. Uh, to be fair, they still haven't paid me. That's I mean that's true. That's so, true. My but now they own wow. But PlayStation, my loyalty can be swayed. Yeah. Five dollars and I'll trash everything you've ever known. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cheap date. <laughs> it doesn't take much. Valentine's Day, right around the corner. Ladies, I might need 350. 350, you paleolithic monster. Number six, Polyphony Digital and Sony AI have shown off an artificial intelligence that's capable of racing against top human Gran Turismo drivers. Gran Turismo Sony, Sophie, Sophie, is an artificial intelligence agent, trained agent. <laughs> I don't so know why. Secret agent. <laughs> exactly. Secret 
agent driver. Man. Oh, all right. Anyway. <laughs> Agent trained using a novel deep reinforcement learning platform developed in collaboration between Sony AI, Polyphony Digital, and Sony Interactive Entertainment. The AI is trained to master skills surrounding race car control, racing tactics, and racing etiquette to bring competition skills on par to human players at the level of the world's best championship levels and then some. According to Sony AI, the agent has a deep understanding of car dynamics, racing lines, and precision maneuvers to conquer challenging tracks. To beat all the humans and destroy the world as we know it. It To build it back up in the image of the machine. Which is a cat. Yeah, it's cat machines, cats. They control it all. Exactly. Full circle. Exactly. Cell phone in your hand, sound by a cat. AirPods, you're listening to this podcast, then? Cats. Because you know what I'm picturing, right? My left cat hearing. You know what I'm, you know what I'm picturing? What were we picturing? Cats in lab coats. Cats. <laughs> cats in lab coats. Doing the old beaker test where they're pouring one thing into another one with their tiny little cat claws. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Taking tiny cat notes. Tiny cat notes. They got tiny cat goggles on. Cats with goggles. Think about it. That's why the phones are so small, you know? Exactly. They don't have to turn their head that much. They're all they're all touch, you know, for the little little paw beans that they have. You guys are really missing out without any video because we're making some hand moves, some faces, we're getting really into this cat thing. I was gonna say something horrible right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really happy. gotta reel it in a little bit. <laughs> Be clear. Really happy you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> really gotta reel it in. Um. So I'm a negative Nancy on this. Ooh, interesting. Well, so, I think you're a negative Nancy, but I'll stop there. Yeah, I mean, I am a negative Nancy. Uh, my whole thing is, is like, I feel like it's cool for sure. I have a hard time picturing, imagining that they're going to make this into something that will be good for us like everyday players or people in general like i yeah, feel like it's gonna average, be one of those things show yeah the average cat uh i feel like they're gonna make this oh, like we're not even close <laughs> no, we're bottom we're bottom tier cat let's not put us up there yeah it's true good point alley cats um you <laughs> i feel like it's gonna be one of those things where like oh look at this cool thing we made and then they're gonna be like oh we implemented it in the game it's gonna be absolutely terrible and no one's going to use it, and you'll never hear about it again. I would, I would, lo- yes, that is a concern. But I do like the idea that they they do it, and say that does be the case where like why, why is nobody interacting with this? And then they at least look at it and kind of scale it if they can, because mm-hmm. there's no way they can't scale it for mm-hmm. how perfect it should be type yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um. Because right now it's operating at like cat level. It needs to operate at like dumb human level. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, I mean, dude. Again. Cats. It's got it's to operate at sea people level. Cats, fire suits, racing helmet. Chef's kiss. Engine, engine purrs, man. <laughs> it's good stuff. <laughs> Top quality. Good it was, stuff. It was too easy. So the Perfect, video... one might say. <laughs> <laughs> some, of the, uh, some of the video does show off like some very cool things. Just in terms of like decisions that the AI was making, yeah, we're like obviously the pit lane the, thing is like a bullshit thing. <laughs> the pit lane thing really spiked my blood pressure. <laughs> but it's 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 again, I think that gets changed if they literally that's just, like the if they tweak the rule set to say that it like you you even as a player because that's the thing is it's going against with what the player can do as well. Yeah. So if the players thought to do that, they would just also take that same line. Yeah. But if they just put the rule in place where it's like, no, once you've committed to that point, you're stuck. Yeah. Well, now the AI is out that turn as mm-hmm. well as the player. So yeah. that does that yeah. that doesn't become an issue anymore. Yeah. That's um, like a that was a that was a Michael Schumacher winning in the pit lane. Oh, situation. for sure. Which again, great strategy. Yeah. Uh the the cool one though was the the double juke into yep. the undertake. Mm-hmm. Because I can't pull off a single juke. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so the fact that uh, it double juked and then did an undertake and passed two cars 
Like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's like, there are certain times where I would definitely just be, I, I do a lap, right? And I'd be like, all right, man, I felt pretty good about that. Kind of got the track down, did my time trial. All right. I'm 37 seconds off what the AI did. Let's see what they did. And then I would honestly just, there's a solid chance you'd, you'd find me glazed over sitting in a chair, <laughs> just watching AI lap times and be like, oh, the f- yeah, I would have never thought to turn there. And they're like phasing through walls that they know are clippable. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> what? or like uh, the, I think it was early on in that clip. They bomb out basically into the grass. Hmm. And just hard cut right back in, and they yeah. don't lose anything in the grass because it was the, the amount of time they were out there mixed with where like the extension of the tarmac was. They're they knew the limits by that point of what they could go over and still not lose that much. Mm-hmm. And they come back in with a little bit of swerve, but then they're just right at the apex and gone again. And you're like, mm. it'd be nice to know the details, like how many corrections a second that the AI can make and stuff like that. It'd be, it'd be interesting to see that. I also want to know how many races the AI has done. Yeah. yeah. Like in order to learn what it's learned, has it raced like 2 million times on that course to try to figure out where all of its min maxing is? Mm hmm. Or has it like I I would be very curious in like the AI statistics. Yeah. Like if if it's going behind you and you make a juke, how many calculations does it make immediately to know what it should do? What would be interesting if they somehow use the tech that they use to develop the AI to help you like via telemetry make your driving style better. So like if they applied the AI learning to your driving style and then said like, oh, this is your ideal lap time for this track. Or like, you know, based on your style of driving, like, you know, you can do things here and here or something like that. If they somehow made like a driver coach out of it, that would be the the perfect, like, that's my, that's my best case scenario is if they somehow twisted it into like a, an AI driver coach for it players. Def- it definitely would be very interesting if they, mm-hmm. yeah. They took the AI time and knew what its its peak performance was, mm-hmm. and they took your tendency over like five laps and said, "Hey, we've taken your average line and everything. We think that if you if you cut this a little bit different and you kind of shave some stuff here and whatever, you could be doing X amount better or whatever." Yeah. And then that after five races of performing at that level, they can still continue to tweak, and so they can essentially perfect you on a track. Kind of mm-hmm. would be very interesting to do it that way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where are we at here? Number seven. According to Bloomberg's Jason Schreier, another new standalone Assassin's Creed game is coming to fill a void in Ubisoft's release schedule. The new game began as a major expansion to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, perhaps similar in scope to the upcoming Dawn of Ragnarok DLC. But Ubisoft Montreal has now split it off as a standalone title. Apparently, the game will star the AC Universe's reincarnation of Loki, Basim, is it Basim? Basim. Basim. And will be a somewhat smaller scale experience. It may drop the usual huge open world for a more linear, stealth-based gameplay. And I believe the codename was Rift. Which would also be weird, kind of, because Basim's out in the real world. Yes. Which, when I heard the Rift thing, it immediately made me think of the Rifts in Valhalla. I don't know if you came across any of those while you're playing. Nope. It was the they looked like glitches in the game, right? And that then once you what I would think like yeah, and then once you approach it, you your character turned into the human woman that's out in the real world. Oh okay. And then it was like a uh, like a little puzzle scaling thing to where you had to get okay. to the top. And then once you got to the top, you saw a cutscene that. If you collected them all, it would create a Tell complete like a story type that, of thing of of the uh, what are the the people called the the first the ones that created all ones, the, yeah, the, whatever those people are. Listen, I've been dealing with a lot of different creation issues. Of, I feel yeah, I don't know what the fuck they're called. Because Shadowlands is the whole thing. Like, there's the first ones and everything mm-hmm. else, and it's and now it's that which yeah. that's a different thing. So yeah, there, there's just things I gotta yeah. Anyway, those people. Yep, those people. So, possibly a smaller, linear, stealth Assassin's Creed game. Which, honestly... Not a bad idea. Ubisoft's best idea I've heard the past two years. Yeah. 
Splinter Cell Assassin's Creed. Scale it back there. Let's go. What's going to be funny is they're going to do this and it's going to be great and sell like hotcakes. And, and then. And then they're going to completely ignore it <laughs> and go back to their fucking, yeah. here's 300 hours open world bullshit of collecting fucking sea shanties and oranges or something. I'm so you happy know. you also hate that game. You had to collect some cats. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, here's Skull and Bones again. Yeah, Skull and Bones. Skull and Bones TV show. Did you guys hear, you guys hear about Beyond Good and Evil 2? No. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what we're playing at. <laughs> uh, Do you know what it is? I, no. Duh, darn, never mind. Then don't talk about it. Number eight. NVIDIA and SoftBank have agreed to abandon the sale of ARM. Just one arm. The two companies have terminated the deal due to a, quote, significant regulatory challenges preventing the consummation of the transaction, <laughs> despite good faith efforts by the parties, end quote. The $1.25 billion SoftBank received as a deposit from NVIDIA is non-refundable and will be recorded as profit in the financial results for the current quarter. So if anybody's curious, SoftBank making money. Making free money. You know, like we call that we call that tree fitty. Free dollars. Free dollars. It is interesting. It's also not surprising. We at the time, even when this got announced, were like, this is ridiculous. What I don't crazy. know if I have it in the document uh short things. Okay. But did you see that NVIDIA is now worth more money than Meta? More has more market value than Meta. So do you want my quick surprise in there? You want my shocked face? Shock Pikachu face? <laughs> uh, I'm not. <laughs> okay. Depends on who you are. It means two different things. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the issue, potentially, mm-hmm. in the video, always growing up, because yeah. graphics cards are impossible to find, so demand, money, hey. Yeah, they, they they're selling go, they $500 graphics cards for $1,000. Supply, demand, you know, that graph is a pretty clear clear line but meta tried to challenge europe and said i'll take i'll take facebook and instagram away and europe went perfect they got got a double whammy because then they got the uh apple changing their uh privacy stuff too and they lost out on data their data collection so yeah but it's just like it's funny when they're like oh we'll take it away and basically the load of the european union went oh okay please do like we'd rather you not be here anyway. Yeah. And it's like what do you what do you mean? Like yeah, no, everybody like everybody us? hates you. Yeah. You idiots. Uh all right. Uh there was a Nintendo Direct this month. Um I got a list of every single thing that was mentioned. Um how about I rip through it and then you say hold up a minute and then you can talk about things you want to talk about. I like the reference, I'll do a little hold up a minute. Hold up a minute. All right, so first up, we have Xenoblade Chronicles 3 announced for September. Uh, Mario Kart Deluxe is going to get 48 new tracks with paid DLC through 2023. Now, hold up a minute. Yep. Because that's a great deal. Wii Coconut Mall? No, I know some people are whatever about the through 2023 thing. Yeah. But let's be clear, that's 48 tracks. Yeah, I saw some anger about the fact that it wasn't a new one. but Sure, I get that. But here's the last thing that they're missing, is to put some Double Dash DLC in. Allow that to come back. That being said, 48 tracks, I, I'm i down. I think the only thing they're waiting for potentially on, a, on putting actually like a true new Mario Kart out. Mm-hmm. Do you want me to rip is, through some of the, the details on it? Uh, not really. Okay. <laughs> the only thing I think they're waiting for like a new Mario Kart is going to probably be like a new console. Because it's just such a good selling point. It it's a great new console IP. It drives sales. It's it, it's free real estate. I don't know. Yeah, March eighteenth is the first uh, drop, uh, and on the pricing's the interesting thing. Uh, so the booster course pass will be twenty five dollars, but it's free if you have Nintendo Switch Online plus expansion pack. So they're yeah they're double dipping. Yeah. Hey, just pay for this and hush hush. Mm-hmm. Hush child. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Uh, Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes uh, something 
something announced, I guess. I guess they announced it. Sure. Yep. Uh, June 24th. Uh, Mario Strikers Battle League. 5v5 Soccer. Yeah. Uh, Strikers was a game that was on the Wii U. I believe also maybe the Wii. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why I think it was on the Wii U. But yeah, it was it was exactly that. Power-ups, you know, play soccer in like a little, little arena and everything. It was a fun time for a little bit, but I never really played it. Had I didn't ever own it. Mm-hmm. I didn't have anybody to play against with frequently, so I was just kind of I got. I was like, all right, it's a cool thing, but yeah. June tenth, that will be out. Yep. Uh, there's a Chrono Cross remaster that was announced, that which will be coming on April seventh. Looked rough. Looked rough. Great. Here we go. Here's the one he's gonna really want to talk about. Nintendo Switch Sports was announced. Uh, it's obviously a new take on Wii Sports. And let's see here. What do we got for details? Uh, there's a leg strap accessory. Uh, that was a part of the Ring Fit Adventure, I believe. Yeah. Found in the Ring Fit Adventure. Could be used to kick a virtual ball and soccer shootout. Um, it'll be available April 29th with free updates post-launch. Um, the one that adds golf. Uh, there's an online play test that will take place February 18th through the 20th for all Nintendo Switch Online members. Now, they told me it couldn't be done, Matt. They did. I told them to shove it and do it anyway. You, you sent the cats. I sent all the cats. They took care of it. Milo, Otis, whichever one was the dog, I sent the other one. I don't. I, th- I think Milo was the cat. I don't remember. I don't either. That sounds good, though. Homeward Bound, I also don't remember which one of the cat was there. It was a girl. Yes, but I don't remember her name. Something that ended with a Y. It was, Evie? No. No, it was like, uh, I want to say Stacy, but it wasn't Stacy. It was like, hmm. it doesn't matter. But yes, I sent all of them. What all matters of, is that there's all the famous cats. Switch sports. Morris, the cat food cat, sent him. Didn't even know his name was Morris. I think it's Morris because he always got confused with Morse code. Famous cats. Grumpy Cat, don't remember his name, but... Yeah, that's up there. Rip. Sent his corpse. <laughs> Via trebuchet. <laughs> Via trebuchet. <laughs> the superior siege device. As the cats knew, because they created the trebuchet. Because obviously. <laughs> that's obvious. That. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, they told me it couldn't be done. I told them to shove it, and boom, here we go. We got. We finally got what I've asked for them for two years. I have asked for the Wii Sports version. Now, the thing I didn't ask for is Chambara. No. I didn't know that's a word for swordplay. I like swordplay, except for there's connotations there we're not going to go to. The They told me you know, it couldn't be done. Now, the thing I didn't ask for, though, is the leg strap. I didn't ask for that. <laughs> but it was an interesting addition. Swordplay, man. And they were only... <laughs> I tied to something else for that. And so... The <laughs> Leg strap. <laughs> God, I wish. The... Uh... <laughs> Come on, man. They... They only use it for the soccer game. Okay, that's it. it that's the only thing. It's so that you basically take the idea of... The, the what demo... is it with Nintendo and the fucking, like... Ooh, pointless gimmicks. I don't know. It's what they do. At least it's not made of cardboard. That's so true. they, the video they showed, <laughs> the video they showed was you had it strapped to like the person's thigh, I think, but it was basically like corner kicks coming in and you just trying to volley them in. Interesting. Um, but they had, yeah, they had soccer, they had volleyball. All right, bowling, tennis, yep. uh, sword play, uh, soccer, yep. badminton, and volleyball. Yep. And I was like, all right, I'm down. I'm going to sit in my room and just bowl, uh, just out of boredom and hate. Yeah, badminton will probably be a good I'll one. I'll clearly play volleyball, obviously. Yeah. But bowling was always just, I just did that. I'm yeah, just sad. So, so the one thing I'm sad, there's no baseball. Oh, it'll probably be added in a free update. Probably a money update, let's be honest. But it, it's here. We hmm. have it. They said it couldn't be done. <laughs> ah, right. Don't forget to do your online play test, February 18th through the 20th. Uh, Triangle Strategy gets a free demo that will carry over to the full game. Uh, March 4th is when that uh, will be released. Uh, remakes of Front Mission and Front Mission 2 were announced. 
Splatoon 3's new salmon mode, salmon run mode revealed. Metroid Dread free update adds Dread mode and rookie mode difficulties. Now, Dread mode's interesting because Dread mode means one hit, one kill. That's rough. April 2022. Blaze well, it. Uh, Kirby in the Forgotten Lands mouthful mode will let Kirby become a car. Or a Did you see the images of that? I saw Kirby looking like he stretched himself over a car, and it was very unsettling. You, that means you saw it. Yep. Now, just picture that driving down the road. That's Can't wait. Someone's going to do it, and you know it. I can't wait for that skin in Forza. That's an interesting idea. Actually, I'm going to drive that in Gran Turismo. March 25th. <laughs> Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings will be added to Nintendo Switch Online the day of the Direct. Uh, Advanced Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp is launching April 8th. Woo! Go team. Hot, hot, hot. Uh, live Alive, Live a Live, Live Alive, Live a Live. Don't know. It's one of those. We'll come west for the first time this year. Uh, July 22nd. Whatever the hell that is. So, kind of has some... Gra- they did a graphic change of it, so it looks kind of like Octopath Traveler yep. graphics, which Matt doesn't know what that means. I do know what that means. Okay, so he says. Hates Nintendo, knows what that means, which is an obscure reference Listen, for Nintendo. I feel like Octopath Travelers was shoved down everyone's throat. I mentioned it a few times. All right? Not you, specifically. All right. But it apparently was a uh, Japanese RPG that falls under that same like old time style Ta- they do tactic uh, tactical battles so it's like a grid based battle system and everything some of the names that worked on that like the original one mm-hmm. went on to do stuff like super mario uh, they had stuff on super mario rpg final fantasy 4 like there's a lot of when you look at the names and what they went on to do you're like oh they went on to almost become legends basically yeah and this never showed up in North America, so I don't think North America is going to talk much about it. Mm-hmm. But maybe it'll be one of those hidden, hidden unsung gems. heroes type yeah. of thing, where when people do actually put their hands on, they're like, "Oh, interesting." Uh, Portal One and Two is coming to the Switch as part of the Portal Companion Collection. Uh, MLB The Show 2022 uh, gameplay footage was revealed. How'd that look? Did you watch it? I didn't. I am going to say right now, I bet it didn't look good as the other things. That's what I was looking for. But you know what? It looked better then. Um, Come on. It's a baseball answer. The fuck was that game called? What was it called, Matt? Oh, my God. I can see the front cover of it. Uh, I can't remember. RBI Baseball. There it is. RBI Baseball with those stupid fucking triangles on it. Diamond or whatever the hell it is. Uh, Star Wars The Force Unleashed was announced for the Switch. Another uh, remaster made by Aspire. April 20th. It's the Wii version. Oh, God. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Sorry for your luck. (laughs) Disney Speedstorm. A new free-to-play racer. Sounds horrible. Uh, no Man's Sky is coming to the Switch this summer. Also, doesn't sound like a good idea. Um, Minecraft in space. Poor, I I shit on the Switch so much. Like I, I in my mind, the Switch is like a fucking deck of cards. Like it's worthless. Yeah, and I don't ex- know why because it's like not. Except at the exact same time, it also has more units sold in the Wii. Yes. Yes. So is Matt living in in a bubble where he doesn't realize that Nintendo is run by cats? You damn right. It's just like, I feel like it's, I don't know. I see some hey, of the games that are on it, and I'm just like, that's not possible. Man, did you know that it beat out it Xbox outs? and PlayStation yeah. sales for the longest time before the PlayStation 5 and Xbox? It did last month, too. I didn't throw it in the dock, but it, it sold more units last month than, than both of those. Do you want me to blow your mind on what you can find in a store right now versus what you can't? I mean, you can probably find a fucking Switch pretty easily. Um, oh, no way. <laughs> Kelowna. Alona. Alona? Is the case silent? 
No, I was just making a joke between oh. the cologne name and a, the alone rhyme. You know, cologne rhymes with alone. So you said mm. Kelowna, and I just said, yeah, Alona. Door to Phantomile. And Kelowna to Lunatis Vale. Make their way to the Switch in July. Listen, I'm I I could have made those up. You don't know. <laughs> You're right. I didn't click on the link with you, nor did I watch the direct. I got I got the tidbits that I wanted. Uh, Tycho no uh Now see, you stumbled through it, which is how I know it's real. Yeah. Uh, Rhythm Festival drums. Uh, onto the switch. Rhythm Rhythm Festival. I think is what it's called. I would hope it would be drums though, because I just want to have Cat Jam. It has seventy six bopping beats. <laughs> Catch uh, Cuphead, the delicious last course, is coming to the Switch on June 30th. Assassin's Creed, the Ezio collection. Uh, the is what? Ezio? 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 How? It's Ezio, isn't it? It's Italian. Forza? Come on. How would you say you you don't say Forza? I know you don't. Forza, yeah, Ezio, exactly. Um, now get some pasta and get some maracada. <laughs> February seventeenth. Everyone's always like, "Oh, Ezio," and like, "What's the other one?" That's Altair. Altair. I look. Oh, they're the best ones. I don't remember anything of those two did. Well, Altair is the first one. Yeah, he's the very first game. Okay. Which is the only the reason. Like, he's yeah. the very first game, and then you don't play as him again until in the Ezio games you go back and, like, have memories and play as him. But he's never a main character again. Mm-hmm. But Ezio got three games of the main character. I don't remember any of them. That's why there is the Ezio collection. Uh, Kingdom Hearts Integrum. Uh, At one point, you hung out with Da Vinci. Uh, I knew that. You do this flying machine. You do know. Uh, yes, the the fucking Kingdom Hearts games came out. We already talked about that. <laughs> um, SD Gundam Battle Alliance is coming out later this year. There's 800 of those. But uh, you're gonna get that get one to this Fuma time. Den on Dying Moon, some roguelike game. I don't know. You're getting too Japanese for me. And then uh, there was a montage that had a bunch of uh, Switch games that were coming out as well. Like Lego Brawls, Demon Slayer, uh, Two Point Campus, and uh, Zombie Army Four. Not anything. Anything else you want to say about that? Nope. Cool. Let's talk about some questionable things that we didn't write full paragraphs on. Like Horizon Zero Dawn has sold over twenty million copies around the world across PS4 and PC. Do you remember off the top of your head what was the number of Shushima? Eight million. Well done. Do I get a cookie? Sure. Okay. I have them downstairs. I don't trust you. You, <laughs> you saw the stuff that was on my Oh, table. yeah. That's right. I forgot about that. You know I do. Because yeah, I couldn't he's eat all He's got cookies, those. okay? He's I couldn't cookies. eat all of those in one go. <laughs> Number two. Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate Daemon Hunters, the new tactical RPG from Frontier Development and Complex Games, has revealed a spring release date. Oh, there's more to that. Andy Circus will voice a Grandmaster Varden Kai, who will advise players from their Space Citadel between missions. Do you have a Space Citadel? In my pants? Number three. I don't know what that means. I don't either my butthole <laughs> it is a hell of a fortress <laughs> uh, toxic, ga- toxic gas yeah it's true it does have booby traps foreign objects <laughs> one cost to the other <laughs> uh, number three spacex confirmed that out of the 49 satellites launched on february 3rd it has lost uh, at least 40 due to a solar storm I, I forgot that I threw that in there. It's like some <laughs> random news tidbit. <laughs> I like that SpaceX. Like, <laughs> I, I like that it wasn't just we only have nine left. No, no, we lost forty. <laughs> yeah, I think that's kind of misleading. I think it's because they said there's they have forty that basically are refusing to come out of standby. 
I think they'll figure it out. I just thought it was some ridiculous. I thing. like the idea that they literally are just like no idea where they are. <laughs> Thank God. Fuck it. Uh, number four, Jade, Raymond, and Haven Studios' upcoming PlayStation partnered game will also be on PC. It's been described as a persistent and evolving online game, as mostly all of them are nowadays. There's your first first live service game. Yeah, there's your first live service one, but uh, it's Jade Raymond, so it might get canceled before it comes out. Love you, Jade. <laughs> but uh, Stadia does no good to you. <laughs> Number five, Apple's AR headset operating system, Reality OS, was seen referenced in new source code, specifically on App Store upload logs. I don't like the name. I mean, it's Apple. What would you expect? Yeah, but like iOS is fine. OS, like whatever. Reality is a little. I mean, you know what? No, fair enough. Watch OS. Yeah. Well, the reality one is just so sniffing your own ass. Apple sniffing their own sniffing ass. Their own ass. <laughs> Usually, they would at least fart into the wine glass and try to be a, <laughs> a, a, a sommelier about it. <sighs> I'm, I am happy I got that word. You, you did nail it. Number six, Bandai Namco and From Software claim to have found the cause of their recent exploit. Unfortunately, they are saying that the online services for the Dark Souls series on PC will not come back until the release of Elden Ring. Take that, nerds. Suck it. Number seven, the movie and gaming rights for Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit are up for auction. But apparently not the TV rights then, because Amazon... Yeah, TV rights Amazon has. I mean, the expectation is that Amazon also buys the movie rights and game rights. Yeah, they just get bored and go, yeah, we're good. we already tried making a game and that failed, so let's try a movie and see if that succeeds. Yeah. We'll just fucking, we'll get War of the Rings crammed on our throats for the next, like, five years. Oh, so sad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, quick little bit. Anything you've been up to? Anything remarkable? Um, News noteworthy? Not really. Um... Uh, just doing the normal things that you'd expect, watching uh, some anime, Demon Slayer. Um, my, what the hell is it called? My Dress Up Darling. Great anime. Highly suggest it. Uh, my Dress Up Darling. I No, trust me. I heard what you said. Sorry, we'll watch some clips after this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am going to get a virus on my computer. Uh, the Book of Boba Fett or uh, Mandalor- Mandalorian Season uh, 3. So the funny thing about mm-hmm. Book of Boba Fett, right? Yeah. Is I heard on the radio. Heard through the cat vine. I heard it through the grave. All right, sorry. Um, that's like four songs we've managed to get into know, this podcast. Right? Uh, and like 800 random cat references for that make no sense. Or do they? Or do they? You look at the pyramids and tell me otherwise. Uh, yeah, you're not missing anything. We yeah. are just this stupid that we <laughs> that <we've laughs> related been... a bunch of cat things together for no reason. That we latch onto one <laughs> idea and just run with it. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll do it every podcast. If I get one thing, I will run into the ground. Oil Tycoon Todd Howard knows. The interesting thing is somebody had said on, on the radio mm-hmm. after Wednesday... Oh, have you guys been watching? You know, just the typical. They're the only ones in the studio, but they're just doing the old call the audience, kind of yeah. getting engagement. They're like, "Man, have you guys been watching that uh, that book of Boba Fett? Really starting to pick up." And I was like, "He said that on Wednesday when the last episode came out. He said really starting to pick up, and then didn't address <laughs> that it was the end." And I was like, "Does he know? Does he not know?" I mean, it's kind of funny. <laughs> it was I, I, I laughed out loud in the car. He said, "It start. It's I was really." It's you haven't really been watching to, it, right? No, not at all. When you do watch it, you're gonna be like, "Oh, I get, <laughs> I get it." But he's like, "Oh yeah, it's really starting to pick up." And I, but I knew it was the last episode because you yeah. had told me a couple weeks ago it was this was it. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Yeah, really starting to pick up." And I was like, "What?" Um, I think that this was. I don't want to say a throwaway season, but I think they were trying to put 
things. Were they world building again? Yes. And they were trying to put people and things in specific places. And this, they basically use this season to do that. Here, here's what I need to know right now. Yeah. Does Bosk show up? No, but there is a lot of his people that do. You do see a lot of his people. I know, but I need Bosk or now Bosk. Oh my God. I'm going to forget the other name of the bounty hunter. I wanted to reference, uh, good old Dangar. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Dengar. Does Dengar show up? <laughs> Toilet paper head. <laughs> Does my boy show up? <laughs> nah, he's, he doesn't show up. That would be great if he did, though. Is there at least another IG unit? Um, No IG units. Oh, come, what are we doing? I, I mean, there is some good stuff. It you... was bad enough that there was a Power Rangers episode. Um, What uh, What else do they got? There was something else I wanted to say, and now I can't remember what the fuck it was. Um... Oh, did you see that Obi-Wan Kenobi show got a release date? I did see it got a release date, and I went, that'll line up perfectly, because I will binge Boba, Mm -hmm. I will watch Moon Knight, and then I will watch Obi-Wan. There you go. Patience is a virtue that I rarely have. I was going to say, I don't have that. What have you been up to? Cats. Cats. Learning their ways. Studying them. Their triangle formations. Worshipping them. They're triangle, triangle tr- strong shape, strong shape. They yeah. know cat ear, exactly. It's triangle. triangle, yeah. Everything checks out <laughs> exactly. Pyramids modeled after cat ears. Yeah. Duh. If you Kill. look, you know Fucking how get with it, sheeple. You know how <laughs> artists, you know, sign their name. I bet you, you dig to the bottom of those pyramids, you're gonna see imprinted cat paws. Everywhere. Hell yeah. They stuck the sphinx there because they're like, can't let the humans watch this shit. Exactly, but also distraction. Exactly. Misdirection. Hey, quick, you guys build this. I gotta build some pyramids. Exactly. Boom. <laughs> anyway, uh, now just wow. Now that I officially have a release date for 9 2. Yep. Uh, here we go. Final push, prep work, everything else. Uh, talking with some guys in the guild, trying to. Game plan? A, a kind of game plan. We kind of know what we want to do. Um, Doing what I love to do, work my way into the officer group. Yeah. Little elbow nudge, little elbow nudge here. And then before I know it, I nudged out three other people, and here I am. Yeah, it's the old fucking cat strategy. Exactly. I will become important, and you will love me. Yeah, exactly. But in the meantime, you touch my belly, I kill you. So That's exactly it. You know, it all depends. It all depends. <laughs> Some people you like are the ones you hiss at. You got to do what you got to do. Exactly. I've learned over many a year with many a cat. I have adopted their customs and how I apply them to my life. <laughs> but uh, no, it's I'm talking with them because it, it's after our raid on Tuesday, mm-hmm. it did not go as well as it should have. Mm. So there was a lot of frustration that popped out. Mm. Now, that's fine. Yeah. I'm okay happens. with it. Happens sometimes. Exactly. I get it. Or not Tuesday. Sorry. Th- Tuesday? Thursday? One of the two days. I get it. That happens. Whatever. But the frustration isn't wrong. Mm-hmm. We were not doing mythic. We were doing heroic. Yeah. We were on Sylvanas. It sh- we've killed it multiple times. It should be a brain dead kill. Yeah. Second nature. People should making be. mistakes. People getting carried. You know, blah, blah. Just all these issues were slowly like manifesting themselves. And knowing that we were close to a patch date, it's like we have to have a hard like come to cat Jesus moment. Uh you're not going to be fit for mythic because we're not going to be able to carry people in the beginning because we're all going to need gear again in order to do that yeah so there was just a little bit of that and one of the main guys like got frustrated and just like disconnected immediately when when we were done Mm -hmm. i was like okay he's he's annoyed and i get it because he's been with those guys longer yeah i'm still just kind of like just seeing it yeah and so i talked to him a little bit because I heard him again last night when we were talking, and I can hear the annoyance in the voice. The, the, um, not the Tambra, but the, the way he's talking and mm. tone and stuff like that. It's, it changes. Yeah. And I can tell he's, nothing's even happened. We're not even rating just normal conversations, but I can hear annoyance. And I know why, but I needed to make sure. So I like messaged them to, I messaged him specifically today, and I was like, I know you and I are in the 
are in main chat talking about like nerd numbers and everything. But separate from that, like you good? Because I know you were annoyed then, and I can still hear it. And he's like, yeah. And then he kind of gave me like the reasons or whatever, and I was like, all right, we'll you know we'll figure something out. We'll we'll make it work. Hopefully, mm. I'm not going to be involved in any of those decisions. I know that. Yeah. But it was more like make sure more of a make sure you're not annoyed with me and think I'm one of the carries because if that's the case, I need to step up. Yeah. Which I'm not. I don't think I am. So, but yeah. it was just a. Uh, hmm. I know he's also not alone in that thought because I talked with another one of the officers right after that raid, the one that recruited me, and I was like, "How do you deal?" Or like, "What's going on?" And he's like, "Ah, oh, yeah." It's like, okay. So is there is there common is the, is everyone? I think all the leaders are of the same thought. Okay, same same people are the yeah. problem. I think the leaders are of the same thought. I think the only thing is that they're different in how they want to handle it. Mm. I think one would be just very more direct about it. Mm-hmm. The other one is wants to kind of do that, but also wants to f- go with the one that wants to be softer about it. Yeah. So there's one kind of in the middle, one that wants to go further, but it's just going to play silent. And then the other one that's kind of being softer about it, that they, they both want to be like a little bit more firm with mm-hmm. like trying to show up to our main raid, but not being prepared is unacceptable. Yeah. Type of things. So mm-hmm. we'll see how it all shakes out. Drama. We need like Can't a drive to survive. I think I've said this before. We need like a drive to survive show that's just like following WoW guilds. WoW guilds, yeah. Yeah. I saw a picture of Max today from years ago. Really? And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I get so annoyed because I always see his tweets like, ah, I just woke up. Time to start the day. It's like 11, 12 o'clock. I'm like, you know, fuck you, bro. Yeah, it's not only West Coast boy. Yeah. It's West Coast boy. And then at 4 o'clock, he'll tweet, just woke up. And I'm like, I hate you. Yeah. I hate you, mister. I get to stay at home because my job's a world first raid leader. <laughs> I'm a content creator on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> what a What a life. What a life. I'm just really good at what I do. Oh, man. Can you, <laughs> I'm the cat's meow. Can you imagine being competent like me? <laughs> Bow down, kittens. <laughs> You're not yet for grown cats. Uh, let's be fair about the cat thing, though. Uh, the movie Cats, full bullshit. Or the the Broadway play, it's full bullshit. The whole thing's bullshit. Well, the, the Broadway play is good, right? Uh, yeah. The movie like the was horrible. The movie's terrifying. Yeah. I haven't, not, I haven't seen either. It's not a correct representation of how well we worship cats. We exactly. actually, in the cat kingdom, we ignore that. Yes. It's it is considered, blasphemy. It is, exactly. It is a, a heretic document. Yes. It's the lies they tell you, not what you feel. Mr. Mr. You merely adopt anyway. the cat. I was born with the cat. Cut my <laughs> cat. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I didn't adopt me till I was nearly a man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're out. Seven days. See you then. Bye bye. Meow. Yeah.